Do you hear that sound? That beautiful sound. That is the sound of me cashing in on the thing. Well, a new Ninja Turtle movie is upon us, and I'm pretty excited for it. Mutant Mayhem looks like it's going to be super cool. I love the animation style that we've seen in all the trailers. I really feel like it's going to be a cool movie. And even though Ninja Turtles have never been my main thing, I have to admit, I've been interested in the toys. Especially when I went to Target and found that I could get most of the main characters just in one fell swoop. Yeah, I think this is a Target exclusive. In fact, I know it is because it says only at Target right there. Um, but you can get all the Turtles, plus April, plus Bebop, all in one box. These are all the normal releases, save for Bebop. He has some extra green on him to simulate getting splashed with ooze. So, I got that, and I figured, well, they also have Rocksteady, and they have Superfly, so I can basically get all the main bad guys. So, with all these figures now in hand, I just want to talk about them. See if they're worth the money, if they, they feel like good figures, and just get more excited for this movie, I guess. For me, personally, it would make the most sense to start with the individually boxed guys, so why don't we start with who's being set up as the main villain in the movie, Superfly. Um, I do like this, Ninja Turtles have kept up with their uh, tendency to add like a little joke or a description of the character, so Superfly is a pretty fly guy. Uh, of course, Playmates logo, Playmates the longtime owners of the Ninja Turtles, Literally the only thing they have that still makes money. Um, and then you have the uh, description here. Busting out of the New York sewers are four bodacious brothers ready to kick butt. Born from mysterious mutant ooze. These tubular turtles and their radical rat dad have trained in the art of ninjutsu to become a bad guy bashing super team. With their, stu oh, with their buddy, April O'Neil, they're about to face the gnarliest mutants the world has ever seen. And you can see, uh, we basically have all the Wave 1. So, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo, they're all on the bus. I was not able to find Splinter in the store. I would have picked him up if I found him. Couldn't find him, though. Rocksteady and Bebop, got him. Superfly, we're looking at him right now. Leatherhead, they had. But to be honest, um, I'm not a huge fan of Leatherhead. And... I don't know. Like, when I was so done, I was already spending, like, a good bit of money on all these guys. And if Splinter wasn't there, I couldn't be complete. So I figured, at that point, maybe I don't need Leatherhead. I'll, I'll go back and pick him up later, maybe. But let's read about the Superfly bio right here. A highly intelligent humanoid fly. Superfly has lived in hiding his entire life, slowly amassing power in the criminal underworld. He's clever, charismatic, and confident. And behind those li eyes lie a sinister plan. That is unlike anything the turtles have ever faced before. And the mutant menace meter, we have a full five canisters of ooze. That's cool, too. You can cut this out and you have a cool little character card. Um, so Superfly, right? This is obviously not a dude who's been in any Ninja Turtle media before. When I first saw the trailer, I honestly thought it was supposed to be Baxter Stockman. I don't think that's the way they're going. I feel like there's Baxter Stockman, like, in here. But, like, I don't feel like this is going to wind up being Baxter I think this is going to be a new character in a similar vein to how, like, in the uh, 2003 series, that Shredder wasn't Krang, but was something similar to Krang, you know? Let's go ahead and open them up here, see what we got. Oop. I do like this box design, too. The purple and yellow really work for me. I'm also really glad that Ninja Turtles are getting past the point where everything needs to be green. Okay, so we just have a simple little twist tie. Let me get my scissors out. Scissors will always make this go so much quicker. Ah, there we go. And then we'll break out Superfly. Mm. Oh, his, his wings are on a different plastic tie. Okay. Come on here. There we go. His wings also come in multiple pieces. So let's get all of those onto him now. Are big wings supposed to go up, maybe? Yeah, big wings are up. There we go. Then we'll plug this wing in. Okay. Doop to doop. Okay. Ooh, he's having a little bit of a hard time standing. Let's get the rest of this stuff out. Doop. So, da 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 da. Yep. And then his gun. All right. Let me have a look at him and then we'll talk about it. 
now's a good time to mention something, right? Uh, the 2012 Turtles toy line, I was really into, and I bought a lot of those figures. I wound up parting with most of them a couple months back, but, uh, you know, I, I grew up with those those figures. That's what I think of when I think of a Ninja Turtle toy line. Um, Rise the TMNT, even though that's my favorite cartoon the Ninja Turtles ever had, wasn't big on the toy line. So I only got the main Turtles, and then I sold those guys off. So, Superfly here, messing with him. He definitely reminds me more of the Nick Turtles, with his articulation and even kind of his style. He does have some good points, like you have a rotation, as well as a neck hinge. You can have him looking that far up for a flying pose, or looking down a little bit, which is pretty good. His monster arm has a universal joint and a hinge. I thought the claw could open. It can't, but that would have been cool. Another universal shoulder over here. Then you have a universal at the elbow, and nothing in the wrist, but you do have his gun. Then these arms are not articulated but universal hips, and then universals at the knee joints, get you into some good poses, and the feet. So, the figure is really cool looking. The articulation works, right? He's not Marvel Legends articulated, but you got a lot of really good points, which I'll say this about Playmates, when they do their figures right, they know how to take a $10 figure and make it feel like you're getting so much more, just because of how smart they are with their accessories and their articulation. With all that said, Superfly is a design that is very um, lopsided, to say the least, so it actually is kind of hard to get him to stand. As you can see, I'm having to use his monster arm as basically a tripod, but if you're okay with that, he's a pretty cool figure. He also comes with this. So this is a thing that's been around ever since the Vintage Turtles, where basically you would have these accessories on a training rack that you could take off and use with your figure. You can see here you have a gun, at, for, as an accessory to Baxter Stockman, you have a fly swat with a tortoise, still already killed. Um, you have a beaker and some test tubes. Pretty cool. I'm probably not going to take these guys off, just because I don't see the need to. Plus, they're not painted, so I don't think they look that great. But cool little way to give you a little bit extra um, nostalgia and also a little bit more bang for your buck. But me, personally, I'm good just having Superfly with the gun. Next up, we have Rocksteady, Mutant Muscle. Let's see what the description says here. Built like a tank, Rocksteady is pure mutant muscle. Whether it's from his fists or his horn, you do not want to take a hit from this guy. He and Bebop make a dangerous duo, but their brains are what some may consider small, even for morons. That's kind of funny. Uh, three canisters of danger. Also, Rocksteady is going to be cool for me because he's voiced by John Cena. Yes! Um... I gotta say, so my sister watched the trailer with me, she's also excited for the movie, but um, when they introduced Mondo Gecko, she didn't hear the name, so she thought Mondo Gecko was a chameleon, so she leaned over to me in the theater and said, that's such a wasted opportunity, John Cena should have played the chameleon, so you couldn't see him. You know, sometimes I'm so happy to have a little sister. So I'm taking Rocksteady out of the box, and I just want to say this, um... He's, his arm comes unattached. Oh, wow, that was tough. Um, now, there's a good reason for that. You know, you got to make them fit into the box. It just, I thought that was kind of interesting to see. I've never seen someone, I've never seen a toy company be like, yo, let's remove limbs to make them fit. Looking at Rocksteady, I like this. So, he has some interesting articulation. He just has a swivel at his head, but that does give you some good articulation. You have a universal at the shoulder, you have a hinge at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, universal at the hip, and a pretty deep knee. Those are all pretty good points. Um, here's the thing, right? Rocksteady typically looks more like just a bodybuilder. I really like how they've made him almost more of like a, like a Quasimodo kind of character design, because that gives you more of the silhouette of a rhino, and also gives him a little bit more of a unique look from his best friend Bebop. I like this. I don't know if I'd want every Rocksteady to look like this from now on, but this is definitely a cool way to take him in a more stylized look. I also like his gun, which looks, you know, fittingly kind of sci-fi for the Ninja Turtles. Comes out really well. Painting is overall pretty decent. I think I like him more than Superfly, but at the same time, I think Superfly is more impressive of the pair. Uh, speaking of other things that he has in common with Superfly, we have the art, the accessory rack again. You can see now we have a sledgehammer, combat knife, a shield made out of a manhole cover, and another gun. Thing is, right, because his gun is just that normal silver, 
These guys don't look quite as unpainted. I still don't think I'm gonna break the sprues on any of them, but I think these work better than Superflies did because they blend in a bit better. Well, that just leaves the main event now of the Ooze Cruisin' figures. And I wanna say this again, right? I like this box set as an idea before I even go get into it because it gives you all the main characters plus a bad guy. It's not like there's anything that's super exclusive in here. It's not like this is the only way you can get April. All these other figures are out on individual card backs. The only thing exclusive about this is the fact that Bebop has the green on him, but I don't think that's enough to be like, oh, wow, now you have to get doubles of these characters. So, for me, this is the way you do a box set. You make a cheaper, more available option for people to get the majority of Wave 1 if they want it, without making it to where it's the only way to get a main character. It's something I wish a lot more toy lines would keep in mind. I also like this detail. So Donatello is driving in the front, right? He's in the side profile. In the front, he's also on the cardboard, driving. That's pretty good. Also, all the other Ninja Turtles are in the position they should be based on where they are on the other side. Um, the bio here says, These turtles won't be taking any orders. When evil mutants create mayhem in New York, it's up to a team of, t or it's up to Team Green to deliver justice. Bebop is cruising for a bruising by taking on April and the Turtles. Pretty good. Also, I don't want to be gross, right? Bebop has highly rendered man boobs. And his nipple rings are just staring at me. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to try to block Bebop out of my mind real quick. Um, otherwise, I think the art's pretty cool. That's nice. Over here, it's just the back of the bus. And there we go again. So they do have the turtle van for sale. I've seen it, didn't buy it. But another reason to get this box set is if you want to, you could probably just use this box as your playset if you would like to do that, which is another cool little double feature of this playset. Here's out of the box. I had to say I'm already having a ton of fun with them. So let's talk about each one individually, what I think works or maybe doesn't work for a handful of them. And then we're going to do a big kind of ranking to talk about what all these figures, I think, kind of measure up against each other. First up, we do have this Bebop that has the, I guess, exclusive paint job of the ooze on the front. Nothing on the back, so it's really just the front that has that new detail. Um, of course, there's a little bit of cool things to talk about with this Bebop. Of course, he's being played by Seth Rogen, who's also kind of spearheading this whole movie from the sounds of it. And there's a lot of details I like here. I like they kept a lot of the classic looks, the glasses, the shells for shoulder pads. Uh, the wow is new. I kind of like that one. Uh, that said, they gave him his classic gun. Love it. Issue is, his hands can't hold the gun. So, as you can see, it falls out of his grip a lot. That said, we do have some decent articulation. We have a swivel at the head. We have a universal at the shoulder. The shoulder pads do get a little bit in the way, but not too bad. You have a hinge at the elbow, rotation at the wrist, universal at the hips, and pretty deep knee. So, kind of like his buddy Rocksteady, he has quite a few points to use, and overall I think he's a better, more colorful figure. That said, I don't think he holds a candle to any of the good guy figures. What about April is how every version of them gets to basically have a completely new redesign, whereas the Turtles always have to play it a little bit safe, and even characters like Shredder and Casey have to be kind of samey. April can always be different, and I like this new look, more of a teenage April, very much falling in line with things like the uh, 2012 Turtles or Rise the TMNT. I like that. I, I've never liked the idea that April is that much older than the Turtles. I like it more when they're all kind of in the same age group. Um, not a lot of articulation on April. You have a good ball joint, universal at the shoulders, uh, universal at the hips, and then a knee, which doesn't go back, but goes forward a lot. That's really weird. Um, then again, I think that's misassembly, because this other knee doesn't do that. So maybe I can try to switch this around. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, they, they, they put two left thighs on this April. That's weird. That's not okay. But hey, you can make it work. Overall, this April is pretty cool. It definitely has a good look. Um, I just kind of wish maybe there was better QC on my particular one. But keep in mind, this is just my April. I don't know how widespread that is. It might be a, one of those one in a millions. You know, it happens. Turtles now, and I love Michelangelo's big, 
doofy grin. Look at him. He's so happy just to be here. You have good paint, all the hits of orange, the silver paint here on the buckle, the shell, which, by the way, if you'd like, you can take his nunchucks and put them in his belt, like so. Well, I say like so. Let me, uh, let me get this worked out here. Oh, come on. Come on. Of course, now I can't do it when I'm trying to do it to the camera. Oi, here. There we go. So, that's really cool. I always like it when the turtles can store their weapons. Uh, some of my favorite turtles from the 2012 series were the ones where they had, like, the shells that opened up. Ah, oh, those were cool. Um, off the point. Overall, I like the texture on Michelangelo's skin a lot. There's a lot of pores throughout the skin, which is really cool to see. I say pores, they'd be scales, wouldn't they? Um, also, a good bit of articulation. you got a ball joint at the head, universal at the shoulder, swivel at the elbow. Oh, I say a swivel. No, it's a universal. That's great. You have a swivel at the wrist, though, a universal at the hip, decently deep knee that is a little tight, and a swivel at the ankle. So, if you guys haven't been messing with Playmates Turtles figures... Uh, a thing they always do is the turtles are always really articulated for their size and price point, but the other characters tend to go pretty basic. They've gotten better, especially with this line. They have gotten better, but that's still very much the case where you can get really good poses out of the turtles and maybe just the turtles. Angelo to Raphael. I'll be honest, as a kid, I never cared for Raph, but as an adult, I like him more and more. I have a lot of nostalgia for him that I didn't even realize I had. Looking at Raphael... I like that he's the only one with the full body, or the full head mask. That's a cool kind of similarity to Rise the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Also a cool callback to The Next Mutation, even though in that show it was Don, uh, Leonardo and Donatello to have the full head masks. I like it though. It gives Raphael more of a hard-edged look somehow. Like, it makes him look more like he's just some, some punk out to cause some pain. I love the gritting teeth too. He's the only one to have the proper turtle face. Univer uh, articul point articulation points are the same. Ball joint at the head, universal at the shoulder, universal at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, universal at the hip, pretty deep knee, and a good swivel at the ankle. But of course, a huge reason to love Raphael is his sigh. Some of the best weapons the turtles come with. He can get into his hands very well. You can also have him have it kind of underhanded if you'd like. A thing that I love about Raphael's head sculpt is that depending on the angle you look at it, it looks so different. So here it's more angry. Here it's a little bit more like, yeah, you're going to make my day. Like it's a little bit more kind of happy and cheery. It's a great little thing that Playmates does on all these figures where the head sculpts look weird, but it gives you a lot of different emotions depending on the angle. And Raphael exemplifies that so, so well here. And Donatello is my second favorite turtle, and I do like the design here, right? I love the glasses, I love the deep purple, I really love his fanny pack with the iPhone sticking out. Uh, the iPhone, unfortunately, is not removable, I kind of wish it was, I was hoping it would be. Not the case, but you still got a lot of good things going for him here. Articulation's the same. The one thing I don't like is his bow staff is very thin, and that makes it to where it's hard to actually get it in poses with him. Alongside that, he's lankier than the other turtles, which makes his center of gravity a little bit more awkward and limits your ability to pose him. But with all that said, Donatello is still a really solid turtle. Favorite turtle, Leonardo. He's definitely the most normal looking one here. He has the most typical shade of green, most typical proportions for the turtles. His head sculpt, even though it's serious, still looks pretty in line with other Leonardos. And of course, he comes with his katana. Very cool accessories for the turtles to come with. I like them a lot. They have great silver paint on them. Very good touch. They fit in his hands very well. Overall, I'm very impressed with Leonardo. At the same time, he is a bit samey. But also, good details. I especially love the silver ninja stars on his belt. Um, another thing I want to point out. Let's bring all the turtles back in. So you have Leonardo, Michelangelo. Boop. We'll get Donatello in here. Kind of more to the side. And then let's get Raphael. Raphael, don't drop your sigh. There we go. So, they have continued with the now almost expected tradition that the turtles all have different heights, different shades of green, and different silhouettes. I'm so happy that they've committed to this, right? Because I grew up with the original turtles and the 2003 turtles, and, you know, thank God they had the mask, because if they didn't have the mask, you could not tell them apart. Thankfully, ever since the 2012 show, it has been, you know, customary 
for every turtle lineup to always give the turtles unique looks. So I feel decently confident because I think in the trailers we've already seen them without their masks, at least for parts. You can still tell who's who, which is great. It's something that you absolutely need for a series like this that's so driven by the characters and their personalities. These figures look decent, but there's a, another traditional Turtles problem that shows up again here. The Turtles are way out of scale. Due to the fact that they want to give as much bang as you, to the buck as they can with the Turtles and cheap out on the other characters, you can see Rocksteady, Superfly, and Bebop, characters that should tower over the Turtles, are instead dwarfed by them. The one that looks the most correct, I guess, is Bebop, because at least he has a little bit of heft to him, but even then, Raphael has to look down on him. It's a thing I've never been fa a big fan of when it comes to Turtles figures, but hey, it's the business model. But now that we've gone through all the figures, talked about their ins and outs, let's talk about who are the best, and maybe the not-so-best, of this lineup. Because I do want to stress this again, right? I think they're all good figures, especially for the price. Just barely 10 bucks. You can't beat these guys. But let's talk about which ones will really give you a great experience, and which ones are just kind of worth the money. The best to go to Rocksteady. He has a cool design, and I like him, but he's also so short. His articulation isn't great. His accessories are kind of boring, aside from the one rifle he's already holding. And it really does bother me that he's so much shorter than the Turtles. I know that's not his fault, but... Come on, man. Give me a big, beefy Rocksteady. I'd probably say April. Uh, not a bad figure, just not a lot going on, and yeah, the QC issue was really unfortunate, and that's part of the reason why April's here. Fallen by one of the most unique figures here. I really like him. He has so much great sculpt and detail in. It's just... I don't know, man. I'd like for him to stand better. I'd like for his monster arm to be able to do more. It's just a case of... There's so much good here, and I wish there was just a few more bucks thrown this guy's way. In a, in a real shock to me, I'm actually going to have a turtle not make it to the top four. Donatello, even though I like him a lot and he's my second favorite turtle character, this figure has some issues mostly due to his proportions, and there's also just a lot of clutter here. The fanny pack makes the whole torso just seem a little, I don't know, convoluted. Like, there's too much present and not enough space given to all these accessories for him. Um, other than that, he's a great figure, great version of Donatello, very unique. This isn't me saying he's a bad figure, I'm just saying I think I like a few characters, and few figures rather, more than him. In fourth place, I'm actually going to say Bebop. Um, I think he has a lot going on, he's the best looking of the villains to me. He's so fun to play with, if he could hold his gun better, that'd be even like more of a cherry on the cake. But the, at the end of the day, he's good. He's great for what he is, and I like the green on him. It's a good little way to break up some of the more monotonous colors. Our bronze medalist is going to be Michelangelo. I love that head sculpt and the shade of green. That said, the nunchucks accessories I don't like just because, you know, they can't work like real nunchucks. And at the end of the day, I just like the other two turtles a bit more. In a bit of a shock to myself, I think Leonardo is only my second favorite figure. My favorite turtle, but... He has a hard time holding the katanas somewhat, and I don't know, there's just something about him that's not quite as awesome as the Raphael figure. Raphael just feels good. He has the sigh. He has the full mask. He feels the most unique out of any of the turtles. He's the largest. His articulation tends to work the best. Out of all of them, I think that Raphael is honestly the best figure from this line that I've looked at so far. And if anything, I think that makes a lot of sense. Raphael might be the single most popular Ninja Turtle, and he's definitely the Ninja Turtle who's given the most spotlight in their various shows and comic books and video games. So, yeah, if you gotta put the extra budget and the extra effort anywhere, putting it into Raphael makes a lot of sense, and I'm glad they did, because this is one heck of a good figure. To end up here, I actually want to put our modern, new movie turtles next to our original set of movie turtle figures, the movie real turtles all the way from the vintage toy line. And here's the thing, right? These are my favorite Ninja Turtles. Out of every quadrant of Ninja Turtles I've ever had, right? These guys are my absolute favorites. And they probably always will be because I respect them for what they are, for toy history, for the Ninja Turtle brand, for everything. These guys are still really good, though. I think if you want a modern figure that's nice and cheap, you can get it with pocket change, basically. 
for $10. These Ninja Turtle figures really are great. And they would look good on any shelf, basically, any collection. Um, I think that it really speaks to how great the art style is, that they're so striking, but not alien. And in all honesty, I've been looking around my room trying to figure out where I'm going to put them. I think I'm going to put them with my Spider-Verse figures. I think that's the best place for them to kind of cohabitate. But with all that said, I'm excited to be back into a Ninja Turtles thing, man. Ever since they canceled uh, Rise, I've just not been that taken with anything, not been buying any of the toys. I'm hoping the movie's good, because I'm excited for it, and I know a lot of people are. So, with all that said, hope everyone has a good night. Hope everyone gets to go and see that movie if they'd like to, and I hope it's good, I guess.